Hey there, Internet. Welcome to Adventure Is Nigh, episode two of The Jade Homunculus. With me today is Yatsi Croshaw. Hello, I'm playing Mortimer Raffles with Everwin Smythe, the roguish bard, or bardish rogue. Ooh, <laughs> either way. Also, Casey Wosu. Hey, I am playing Sigmar Iceblood, the jerk-ass archer. <laughs> I didn't know that was an official uh, class in D&D. Very interesting. It's a subclass, I believe, of the, of the yeah. archer. Uh, also with us is Amy Campbell. I am playing Dabarella Yeatster, uh, your local tabaxi fighter that just desperately wants to cook food and, and people to like her. That's it. I love it. And finally, Jesse Galena. Ah, and I'm playing Grinderbin, who's trying to both develop and uh, corner the market on low-powered, quirky items that, you know, some people might call cursed, but not if you put them in the right light. I agree. I am a big fan of low-powered magical items. Last time on Adventure is Nigh, the Jade Homunculus, our travelers left the scene of their most recent massacre in search of uh, possibly an alibi and came across a keep hidden deep within the forest. Dead bodies everywhere, both long dead and newly dead. And they came across uh, the two remaining fighters, neither of which name we know because no one asked. Uh, a human with armor and a flower head guy in leather. After some we'll say playful wrestling. All of you were able to defuse their fighting and attempted to gain access to the keep. After some simple rope play, you made it on top of the roof where you discovered a bed. But it wasn't just a bed. It was a g -g -g ghost bed. Uh, the bed uh, announced itself by hurling pieces of its wooden frame through our human soldier and coming to life. And that's where we left off. All of you are surrounding this bed that has kind of, you know, transformed its way into, uh, as you can see here, a bed with angry eyes. I note uh, only one of us was wearing armor and they immediately died. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. It's almost as if uh, it was a dice roll away of who would get attacked first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, well, the deathbed, the bed that eats, has clearly declared its hostile intentions. Uh, absolutely. So why don't we start uh, start this off by having everyone uh, roll initiative? Oh, we we know the name of the flower, dude. It says on the uh, initiative. Devorty cornhole. <laughs> you know Divorty. what? I have to. I have to hide that initiative list from you. I spend <laughs> a lot of time coming up with goofy names, and you never ask for them. Oh, uh, right, well, well, now we know. <laughs> now you know the flower man's name is Daverty Cornhole. I guess it was written on the back of his jacket in metal studs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or or petal studs. Huh? <laughs> I can do it. I, <laughs> I'd thinking? like to think, Yahtzee, that it's not just the whole name, it's just D-hole. That's what I'd like to think it says on the back. <laughs> Is that the name or an invitation? <laughs> just D-hole and an arrow pointing down. Anyway, I, I like it. This is mine. What, what I will say here is as as the bed's uh, uh, footboard punctures the armor of our human fighter, you do see a dog tag fly through the air with the name of Barnacle Goldenfeel. So, okay. So you also know that character's name. Uh, and once again, by the way, last time I rolled NPC initiative, I got ones. Uh, our bed has rolled a one, goes last. Uh, KC. <laughs> fuck it up. Uh, <coughs> fuck it up. Fuck it up. Uh, Sigmar, you are first in the initiative order. What would you like to do? Let's begin combat. Okay, so this is immediately a fight. Uh, Sigmar feels right at home. 
Um, though <laughs> arrows are made of mostly wood. I don't I was know just how thick that's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> I can't well, imagine um, a metal head that does the damage, though. So, Yeah, um, should... he does have his bow, uh, or at least I, I asked Omar to make it so that his bow was actually like two swords. Like, yeah, he uses two uh-huh. swords, but he can't use a bow at range. A- am I able to use those as my uh, weapon of choice right now? Uh, meaning what? You, you want um, like, like my attack is going to be like a short sword rather than uh, like arrow, like archery. Like you're going to throw a short sword? No, I'm going to I'm going to stab it. Oh, <laughs> stab yeah. It. Yeah. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, like yeah. a sword. You can wonder, you, yeah. you can walk up to it and stab it if you would like. Yeah. I, wonder, <laughs> I wonder if stabbing would help. I mean, we're all experimenting here. I've never fought a bed before. I think we should be aiming to burn it, personally. That's a good good idea. I mean, I wouldn't have thought of that, but that's a good idea. (laughs) This is a castle keep, but you know what? I'm going first. We're just going to rule out whether or not stabbing it hurts it at all. See yourself, put yourself right next to the horrible monster bed and stab it. See how that goes. (laughs) Oh! Wow. Well, that's a dead door. (laughs) KC Nat 20 Noisu. All right, so I will hit it, <laughs> right? I'd have to roll damage now. So you roll damage and uh, you roll critical hit, which means you roll twice the amount of dice. What? All right. Uh, so what, how, how do you hit it? Obviously you hit it with flurry and flare uh, for a big nine damage. How would you like to describe this? Um, okay, so Sigmar jumps straight towards the bed uh, breaks his bow in half, but no, it's actually two swords now. He does a bunch of spins, uh, and then uh, he's kind of like a whirlwind of blades as he cuts through uh, at least the sheets. I don't know if he reached the bedspring at all. <laughs> <laughs> so this is definitely like a Super Smash Brothers, like... Yeah, he's, he's going ham right now. Mortimer Perfect. makes slightly startled eye contact with Davarella. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, that brings us to Grinderbin. Ooh, uh, you can't see Grinderbin's eyes get big at someone attacking this bed. Uh, but Wait, if he how's... had them, they would be like, oh, but this is profit opportunity. Um, <laughs> wait, wait a second. Grinder... How, how did the bed react to that hit? Yeah. I, oh, yeah. How did that happen? Um, its eyes, uh, you know, obviously the only thing uh, different about this bed than a normal bed is it has eyes, and its eyebrows went from angry to uh, it's in pain. <laughs> hmm. Good sign. Does it have... And then back yeah, to Yeah, can it make noise? Is there room for negotiation with the deathbed? Uh, I guess that's up to you guys. Uh, yeah, what you what you heard is a... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe we should get Dory the talking door to talk uh, Yeah. To I mean, I've already stabbed it, so this must be an awkward, <laughs> awkward situation. Well, you're, st- <laughs> well, you're you- stuck an arrow in a um, uh, cornhole, and yeah. that turned out for the best. Also, Good you did stab it after it killed the other guy. Yeah, so. that's true. Self-defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I am curious, uh, and if, I, if I'm 100% sure this is a ghost door, we can ignore whether uh, I want. To, I want to figure out if this is like a intelligent creature or a magical item. Sure. Uh, then why don't you give me what sort of check should you give me? Why don't you give me like an Arcana check? I can do that. Fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. Um. What you can tell is this is a uh, this is a, a haunted item. This is an item that is possessed by a ghost. Okay, Ooh. what do we know about ghosts? Okay, are they reasonable? Okay, so can, at all, I'm not an exorcist, but I have a Ghostbuster skill. Hey, Deborella's read some wrong cookbooks, so <laughs> she might know. <laughs> okay. True. Shut me down at any point you want to, Jack. But here's what I'm going to pitch you. I am proficient in wood carving. Shut <laughs> up. All right. All right. <laughs> so can I, not knowing much about ghosts, but knowing more about beds and, you know, made of wood, can I uh, use my wood carver's kit in some way to, like, create a crack in the bed that would make the ghost escape rather than trying to destroy it. Ooh, 
you're so you're trying to exercise the ghost from the bed using wood carving. Yeah, technically, I'm trying to exercise the bed from the ghost. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that that is some absolute bullshit. But I'm gonna run with it because I like it so much. <laughs> Why don't you give me? Ooh. Is there a woodworking check? You're you're proficient in woodworking. I am. I don't remember if that gives me like advantage on it or something else, and I'm not sure exactly what the check would be. Ba- uh, like maybe intelligence. Basically, based, probably, but. what I'm what I'm thinking here is if you are able to like carve a rune into the bed using your woodworking uh, skills, that would uh, separate the two entities. So why don't uh, just roll me a d20. You can roll with advantage and you can add your proficiency bonus. But okay. I'm going to I'm going to say this is uh, so that should be a plus two. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to say a DC 18. Uh, if you can Ooh, beat okay. an 18, you oh. can hop in there, carve in a rune to separate these two entities. Mm. If I. Uh, OK. <laughs> RNGs Jesus be with us. Yeah. Right. I'll say I'm. For runes, I've got Arcana, but I can leave that out if you want. That's okay. Oh, like an, you want to do it in an Arcana roll? Oh, I could. oh, oh man! I could just get it first try. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're you know, like the pros. I'm trying to set it difficult here. You just roll a, a natural <laughs> eighteen. That is a that is a twenty. I I called out the DC. I cannot change my mind. Absolutely. Uh, so describe what you do to this bed here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, Grinderbin looks at it and is like, I want your your spirit to be free from this hell you seem to be in. And also to be able to sell this at a profit. And I carved like a big dollar <laughs> sign into a structural, uh, like important part of the bed. Absolutely. So you, you carve in the dollar sign. And what you notice is a, uh, a spirit uh, releases from the bed. And uh, and what you hear as the spirit releases from the bed is, mm-hmm, I just liked beds. <laughs> and the ghost of... Probably everyone's favorite character, Jeremy Goodsex, <laughs> uh, floats off into the ether and the bed falls uh, back to the ground as just a bed. Mostly broken. N- nice, nice one, Mr. Magical Artifact Merchant. You are now the proud owner of a bed. <laughs> <laughs> and a door. <laughs> and a door. <laughs> At the end of this adventure, you'll have like a whole house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm building a house piece by piece. Uh, yes. All right. So, uh, by the way, end combat. You are now all out of combat uh, as just a bed lays there. I'm going to say uh, the bed still has angry eyes because I cannot remove those uh, in my I'm software. just sad. That you said Jeremy Goodsex floated out of that, and none of us tried to stop him. I'm just I, sad. I, like he, I want, he the got less like time sent. we spend in physical contact with Jeremy Goodsex, the better. <laughs> I mean, he's a ghost now; he can't physically contact us, right? Well, was, uh, well <laughs> yeah. I was. Curious he how... could possess someone. You never know. <laughs> oh no! All right, I'm pissing about. Let's go. I'm gonna. Go. I'm gonna talk to Mr. Flowerhead Man. And I'm going to say, what was your name again? <laughs> Perfect. Oh, oh, that's right. You never, you never asked for my name. My name's Daverty Cornhole. Right, yeah. plot hole filled. Now, I want you to tell me exactly about this treasure you were casing this joint for. Before we run into any more possessed garter robes or whatever else the fuck is around here. <laughs> well, we, we got, we got word that the the humans were keeping their magical power source item here in this hidden keep. And so we, like I said last time, we used uh, this uh, zombie ghost skeleton attack uh, to to weasel our way in here. As you know, humans are mostly non-magical, so they need magical items to help them. Right. What specifically were the humans doing with this magical source item of which you speak? 
Oh, well, they, they use it for their incantations. They use it to build their great cities. They, they use it for spell protection, focusing, you know, like basic magic stuff. But, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredibly powerful item. Mm, sounds valuable. Mm, and, that's uh, what I was hoping to do with it. Steal it and sell it. Ah, well, you're an unusually candid burglar. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, if you remember last time, you almost decapitated me and then uh, intimidated me to be kind of friendly towards you. So that's that's true. So, um, do you know exactly where it is in this keep? I don't. I didn't make it in. Well, you weren't much good at casing the joint, were you? It's a keep. It, you know, like it's a big stone thing, and we were gonna just rush in and. You know, find it, and once we kill everybody, we got all the time in the world to look for it. Fair enough. Um, well, uh, I don't think there's anything else up on this roof to worry about, unless there's, like, a magic thing in the middle of the bed. Is there? Can we, shall we, shall we have a look? Shall we search the bed? Do if you would like the, to search the bed, yeah. Let's search the corpse of the I bed. I definitely want to search the bed. I am also assuming but curious if this bed will fit in my bag of holding. If uh, not, how are you, you got a kitty get cat. In there? You I don't know how wide the opening it's for uh, my bag this is, is. Uh, this is definitely a Looney Tunes bag of holding. Uh, yeah, you can definitely fit uh, the, uh, oh. the bed in there if you would like. Oh, I can sell a bed with eyes on it. Yeah, the eyes magical or not, but I'm hoping it's magical. Remain yeah, I'm sure someone. That's well, someone. Let's, let's search it first. Damn right it is. All right. <laughs> yeah, you can. Anyone who would like to search the bed can give me an investigation check. I'll do that. Can uh, do normal investigation check. It is a 19 for Grinderbin and a 13 for Mortimer. Okay, so uh, Mortimer, you <laughs> you basically just see this as a very normal bed with angry eyes, of course. Uh, Grinderbin, after a little more searching from you in between the sheets, uh, you do find some human pornography hidden underneath. <laughs> well, that oh man, just it. human. Oh, just, it's just. I mean, it was a human's bed, so very vanilla tastes. <laughs> Vanilla? Is it a cookbook? <laughs> you never know. Maybe there's like a recipe page. Yep. <laughs> so uh, probably some articles. I don't. I don't know uh, if you are brave enough to add human pornography to your inventory list, but you go right ahead. Well, Jack, you've obviously never played an RPG with me before. <laughs> so it's going you, right in my course, inventory. Okay, great. It's, going right. it's going right in there under loot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like hey, it, it might come in handy if Jeremy Good Sex comes back. We know what to do. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's <laughs> throw it and distract him. <laughs> oh. yeah. The eatable statues we found are useful. <laughs> That's all right. Funny. I'm for moving Sweet. on down the stairs. Who's with Let me? Go. Yeah, we found the red staircase. And right Deborahella does a cartwheel as she walks to the <laughs> stairs. And I'll Looney Tunes this bed into my bag. All right, ready? Here it goes. In your bag. Oh, nice. In your nice. bag. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, Dafferty, uh, Dafferty Cornhole, uh, as he sees you all going in, goes, So, uh, you guys willing to share the loot with me after I give you all this information? Okay, I will look at look him square in the eye and say, Yes. I'm I'm gonna need a deception check from I think you because because I know you. <laughs> Nat twenty. Normal oh, deception no. check. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. And he's like, "All right, share <laughs> the loot. Uh, let's go." Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> all right. So you all are heading down the stairs. <laughs> All right. As you walk down the stairs past the uh, bright red roof, the first thing you notice is the smell. A wicked mm. stink like a three-day-old frat party where they were playing beer pong with laxatives. Oh, I the know that smell. <laughs> the smell of blood mixed with sweat and loss hang yeah. heavy in yeah. this grand hall. Uh, there are doors all around you, each with little labels on them. Uh, and next to the stairway, you will see uh, this button, right? Nope. 
at this button right here, you will see uh, a thick metal cellar door. Hmm. So we're on the ground floor now. Uh, you are on uh, the ground floor now. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> right. What do the labels next to the doors say? Let's just go around and check them out. Yeah, yeah. it seems very convenient. Absolutely. Uh, in here, you see bunk room. Mm-hmm. Uh, in here, you see armory. Mm-hmm. Over here, you read that it says kitchen. Mm. <gasps> what? Uh, <laughs> uh, place. Kitchen? This one is the dining hall. And this one says quartermaster's office. Kitchen. <gasps> what if we Can- did split up here? Is that a, a possibility? Never you split may- the party. <laughs> <laughs> But there's a kitchen. Yes, yes. But if we're looking for something valuable, the big heavy cellar doors would be my first thought. Mm. Yeah, but the yeah, key I'm, I'm for curious. that door might be in the quartermaster's office. Or in the kitchen. Or you really kitchen. want to check this kitchen out, don't you? I just want everyone to eat my food. <laughs> well, we got to start searching somewhere. I'm, Deborah I'm... Like, attempts to kick down the door. <laughs> Uh, of the kitchen, you do it. It's it's open. Hey! In fact, it was it was unlocked this whole time. You just kicked it open. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I mean, it's well, a kitchen. We might as well stick together. All right. So as you walk into the kitchen, uh, you notice uh, a stove with uh, a fire still on and water mm-hmm. still boiling. Dishes are left on the tables. Most shocking of all, there's wine on the racks. Not drunk. Uh, You see, you know, stove, sink, small fireplace, and two large cooling cabinets. Uh, Are there any ingredients with which food can be made in said cellar? uh, Oh, yeah. Over, like, over here in these, uh, over here in these two large cooling cabinets, there's a a lot of uh, generic foods, uh, Cheeses, uh, wheats, pastas, breads, meats. Nothing name brand, all generic. All generic brand, all like a, a value, uh, family value brand <laughs> pasta. Yeah. Uh, this is Shasta, a hide, you this know. is a hide into nothing. We're just tempting <clears throat> fate to spawn a ghost dining table or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't see wine. any faces here. I don't see any faces here. <laughs> uh, Sigmar turns off the stove. <laughs> <laughs> Sigmar turns, turns it back on. <laughs> Preheating. Very important. And as you turn on the stove. Oh, <laughs> fucking cold. You man. see an angry stove. You gotta, you gotta listen to Mortimer. He's been on more heists yeah. than you all. Uh, yes, uh, as you futz with the stove, it comes alive. I didn't have time to draw angry faces on this one, so you just get the default token. Um, Beforehand, at- Dabarella yells, No! <laughs> no! I just wanted to make food for friend! <laughs> that that might be a good approach. A um, possessed stove might have the instincts of a stove and wants to cook things. Ooh! Give me a persuasion check with disadvantage. Who? Me. Uh, Dabarella, yes. As, as you're with lo- disadvantage. With geez. disadvantage. I, I do. I mean, it, it's an angry, it's a haunted stove, but perhaps, perhaps it's memory. Can we, I got okay. a nine. You got a nine. And so this stove is conflicted. The stove part of it, yes, wants to cook meals, but the haunted part of it wants to murder people. All right, uh, I'd better step in. Um, I will go, oh Christ, did you say food? God, I'm so hungry. I could really go for something really well cooked right now. <laughs> and and the, the stove says, then how about you? Because we already did a persuasion check, we can't do two in a row. <laughs> Spoiled ah. thought. Yes, uh, I mean, lovely <laughs> idea, but let's have you all roll initiative. You're just sick of me persuading. This is gonna everybody. hurt. <laughs> this is gonna hurt poor Dabarilla's little heart. I think so, and I also oh, think. F- 
I also think that something is legitimately broken because once again, I have rolled a one for the animated <laughs> stove. Um, and Yahtzee got a 22. <laughs> so I'm fairly sure something is broken because four ones in a row can't be normal. But hey, we'll roll with it for this time. Uh, Yahtzee, you are first in huh. initiative order. Huh. Well, um... Well, I might put my. Normally, I'd suggest burning it, but shit. <laughs> oh, that's kind of already happened. Like it, it beat you there. Wait, it's a, it's a lit stove, right? There's fire. It is. It. There's fire on it. Uh, like, <laughs> kind of like <laughs> burners. There's fire on top, yes. Ah ha ha ha. Opposite of burn, put out. I'm carrying. Ooh. I am carrying four water skins. <gasps> okay. So, um. I'm just going to sort of reflexively toss a water skin over the burners from where I am. All right. Well, yeah, why don't you give me uh, give me an attack roll using your dexterity modifier. Okay. Uh, and that'll be kind of like a like a ranged attack, like you're throwing something and you want to hit, I assume you want to hit the burner. Yeah. How do I do yeah, that? Yeah, so basically if you can beat a 10, which is, um, spoiler alert, the animated stove's armor class, I will say that you can hit the burner with your water skin. Okay. Ace. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Yes. I, I like this. I like this. So the water skin lands right on top of the burner. It burns away the hide outer skin and <laughs> empties itself uh, dousing the flame. Uh, this stove uh, looks, I mean, it's still moving, but it definitely is less intimidating now. Uh, I'm going to say uh, it looks like it, you've you've put out a little bit of the oomph. Okay, is it, so it's still hostile then? It's, it's still hostile, but let's just say hypothetically it had some sort of fire attack. Now it <laughs> can't use that fire attack. <laughs> nice. Which All makes right. the person who came up with the fire attack a little miffed, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have let me roll someone so bloody cunning then. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to move in bonus action if that's fine. Absolutely. I'm going to move right the fuck away. <laughs> And I'm oh, gonna there. and I'm gonna put on my bard hat and mm. use bardic inspiration on Dabarilla. Ooh, all right. I'm gonna say, fuck it up, pussy cat. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> all right, and so um, what? Uh, what dice do you give her? Does it, it say on your sheet? D -d 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 bardic inspiration. <clears throat> Uh, inspire others, use it as a bonus action, choose one creature within 60 feet, they gain one bardic inspiration, die 1d6. Okay, so Dabarella, uh, on whatever roll you would like, you can add 1d6 one time, whether it be an cool. attack roll, uh, a, a damage roll, or, or just a persuasion or a skill check, that sort of thing. Uh, all right, that is beautiful. Uh, that gets us to Grinderbin. Sweet. This thing came to life when uh, Sigmire turned it like tried to turn it off, right? Or turned a switch on it? Yeah, was it when it was turned off or when Davarella turned it on? <laughs> it it came to life when it was futzed with, is what you know. Ah, okay. It's my fault. Got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh then uh so if you you tried to turn it off and it came to life? Apparently so. Okay. I'm gonna try and do either if that action was not complete or if it was completed, do the opposite of it. Uh, and cast Mage Hand and try and turn the knob. Ooh, okay. Well, why? I'm trying to turn it off. But we already, <laughs> like, diffused it. We already, like, put the fire out. Yeah, the fire is out. Or oh, maybe gas is, is still coming out. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 the fire is out, but my hope is that, or if all or most of the fire is out, but my hope is that it, what it, what turned it on doing that action will reverse it. Well, that's that's, that's my hope. That's okay, well, and, thought and, certainly. And to give you to give you the full recap, what what okay. happened was it it was on when you came in. Uh, mm. Sigmar then you know turned the knob so the fire went off. Then Dabarella came and turned it back on. Ah, okay. Then I'm going to try and turn it off. And then and then Yahtzee uh, doused the fire, and so now you are going to try to turn it off. 
Yeah, with okay. Mage Hand. With Mage Hand. Uh, yes. And, and so, yeah, there's, you know, like like a stove, there are knobs on, uh, on the front of it. Uh, what I'm going to say is this is a very well-worn uh, stove. Obviously, you know, it's used to cook meals for soldiers in the keep. It's a very well-worn stove. Uh, and so would you like to turn the knob to the left or the right? <laughs> oh no! This is my question to you: uh, left, right, or push it in? Those are the three choices. Uh, well, I guess you could push in either left or right if you would like to do that action. Action, but th- these are your choices. As uh, as these are how normal stoves work. Okay. Let's, can I is, can I mm-hmm. speak as an action before I choose? Absolutely. Uh, Grinderbin will look at Dabarella and say, "Which way is off?" Because she's probably the one who would know at least better than Grinderman. Yes. Uh, so, like, Dabarella, I will say you, uh, being uh, being a, a chef background, you would know Shh. that that left is off, oh, right God. is on, and pushing in uh, is what lights the pilot. Oh, that would have been bad. That would have been very bad. So it's very You were going to push it in, weren't you? It, 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 you know, at least a one in three possibility. <laughs> So, so that is what you know, Dabarella, uh, however you feel like uh, talking back to Grinderbin. Make it go left! <laughs> Be like, all right, thank <laughs> you. And uh, I will cast Mage Hand and try and turn it to the left. Okay, I- I'll say you can do that as, you know, it's just a it's just a knob. So uh, yeah. you, you turn it all the way left and what you hear is like like the gas noise that was leaking out like after... after uh, um, after Mortimer put out the fire, there was like a th- th- gas noise still coming out. Mm-hmm. You turn it all the way to the left, and you no longer hear that gas noise. The stove is still active, but now there's no risk of suffocation. Well, that's something. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, yeah, count that as a win. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that takes us to Dabarella. I have a question. Absolutely. Did we ever get given our magical items, or, or do we still need to find those? Uh, ooh, that's right. We did say you could have the magical ice cream scoop. Because um, <laughs> I want to use that right now. <laughs> abs- absolutely. Hold on. Let me find uh, the properties of that. Uh, so, yes, uh, Dabrella, uh, from, from behind you, you pull out... The Ice Giant's Ice Cream Scoop. This was a magical ah! item that you have obtained sometime in the past. It's basically a giant club in the shape of an ice cream scoop that can do cold damage. If you would like to uh, attack the stove with this, you may. Yeah. I, fuck it yes, up. I may. <laughs> fuck it up. I'm gonna fuck it. <laughs> so, so it's a... a <laughs> We got past the bed already. This is is a different fight. (laughs) So uh, this is a... The spirit uh, of Jeremy is still with us. This is an item that you've used before, so roll me a d20, and you can add seven to that. Your strength modifier plus your proficiency bonus. For fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. Fuck me and my rolls. (laughs) Oh, that's so low. That was a two. Even with your plus seven... Uh, so I think you just get so excited in the moment uh, <laughs> as you, this is the first time with this group of people that you have wielded your uh, Ice Giant's ice cream scoop uh, and you kind of just get too caught up in looking at how cool it is. <laughs> and uh, and you actually end up just not attacking. It's really, it's really <laughs> <Okay>. anticlimactic. So. <laughs> uh, very, very uh. sorry. What a, what a shame. What a... Sh- what a <laughs> that was just a very low roll. I'm so sorry. Uh, would you like to move at all, or would you like to stay where you are? I'm too caught up in staring at the ice cream <laughs> scoop, so I just fucking stand there. <laughs> all right, Sigmar, that moves on to you. Um, okay, this is a metal stove, right? Because it's containing... Or should be containing fire, etc. Correct. Yeah. Correct. This is a metal <clears throat> stove. Uh, am I am I able to do some sort of insight check on it to find maybe weaknesses other than like water? Um, I I mean you know what a stove is, <laughs> you know it's it's a big I mean, hunk of metal. It's 
I, so I don't know if an insight check would necessarily like show you the glowing red spot that will do extra damage. It's a, it's a stove. A, a, I mean, it just a, it feels um, wrong suggestion? to smack it with a sword or something. <laughs> a suggestion from the wings. Okay. Its legs are on the bottom. Try to flip it over. Uh, okay. Um, it does look kind of top heavy. Mm. Just give it like a savage kick to the top of it or something. <laughs> All right. Um, taking Mortimer's advice, can can I just do like a physical Spartan kick? Absolutely. <laughs> aimed, aimed at the top part of it. Absolutely. Um, why don't we uh, try like an opposed strength check here? It's like your strength versus the strength of this stove. Uh, whoever rolls higher uh, is the victor. Oh, yeah. yeah. You definitely win that. You probably saw the animated stove's roll of an eight. Not yeah. very good. <laughs> uh, absolutely. You are able it to. It is a stove. It's a stove. That's it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it might do some damage, but ab yes, you knock it right on its back. Uh, you do a little bit of damage, uh, and it is now prone, which means like it's going to have disadvantage on attack rolls. It's it it can't move, basically. It can't pick itself up. It's a stove. <laughs> oh, good time for us to leave then. Um, am I am I able to talk to it after, uh, within my turn? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you want, if you want to talk to it. <clears throat> I mean, is it is it sentient? That's the question I want to ask. It's like, are like, are you another like spirit that we may or may not know? Well, it, uh, it did like threaten us earlier. It it did have a pretty sick one line. Oh, right. yeah. earlier. Uh, yeah. So uh, as a time, so, the floor, so I'm, I'm asking like, who are you? Like, like, who are you? Ah, uh, I was the chef here, and so when I was killed, my spirit inhabited the first thing that I saw. Oy, oy. Where's the body then? Good question, Dabarella. Where's the body, Jack? It's out in the main hall. Did you see all the bodies? Well, how could it see the when it, at the point when it died? How could it see the oven from the main hall? Ah, uh, you <laughs> see. Uh, have you ever seen uh, the Patrick Swayze movie Ghost? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that, uh, I'm sorry. Is the Patrick? Is Dabarella about? To like reenact that scene with the stove, like. Have, have you ever where seen the, going? the Patrick Swayze stage play a ghost? Uh, you see, when you die, your spirit uh, has some momentum, gets knocked. Uh, is very complicated. I'm sure it makes sense. Okay, fine. <laughs> we'll take that. But can the stove move at all at this point? We could just fuck uh, off. It it is on right, its yeah we can move it's on, on its think, back right? like it doesn't appear to be able to be like ah I I was so angry I was so angry that I attacked who fussed with my knobs okay well I well can I say to it fair all right well we ain't got no quarrel with you so we'll just do our business and we'll come back and turn you back over when we're done all right mm, I like it okay okay I like it I right. will wait here right. Now then, from now on, we move carefully through rooms and carefully check things in case they're no. haunted. <laughs> okay. As as Mortimer is saying this, Grinderbin is directly beside grabbing bottles of wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will I will lightly smack the top of his mushroom head. <laughs> Before we leave, though, now that Dabarella knows Stovey is a chef, um, it's his name now. Oh, Jesus it's Christ. We're on a heist. heist. Can, I no, can I just ask him if he has any good recipes that he can give me so that I can become good chef and share his recipes with the world? Uh, so what do, you, what do you say? Can I ask him for a recipe? Well, yeah, say ask his, him. His... Excuse me, Stovey, Stove Man. Um, um, sir, I I like to cook things, and um, I I want to share your recipes with the world. Can you can you would you like to share a recipe with me? You have tail wagging. You have touched. You have touched my soul. Uh, my name is not Stovey, is what you should know. Although I do think that is adorable. Uh, in life, I was known as Harvest Flourish, and I have been a be chef better. for the military <laughs> for so long. I would love to share with you my okay. most famous recipe. Mortimer's going to look at Grindelwald oh. and think, you're thinking about putting that in the back of holding, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yes. What and, is it? And uh, uh, I will share with you my recipe for uh, uh, baguettes and fish. Great. We're heisting it's for a, furniture now. We're furniture it's a, heisters. It's uh, a lovely sandwich uh, with uh, many ingredients. And yeah, he, he, he describes to you the baguette and fish sandwich recipe, which uh, I'm sure is very delicious. Uh, and as he does that, he says, now that I know my legacy, she can be fulfilled. She can live on beyond me. I can. <gasps> and Horvis Flourish, uh, the spirit of Horvis Flourish can depart this stove knowing that his most famous recipe will live on without him. Ha! Huh. Mundane stove. I'm going to do it for you, Horace. <laughs> All right. A couple of Harvest. The name is Harvest Flurry. <laughs> well, that was uh, that was an adventure. All right. Since, since we've already disturbed the wine, let's let's see if there's any good resellable ones. Uh, uh, give me one second. I need to make some notes to make sure I remember all that <laughs> bullshit that I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fuck it. Let's steal the wine. Let's just steal everything. Let's ransack uh, the Deborah place. takes all the ingredients out of the fridge. No, that might be a haunted fridge. Just wait. <laughs> I. Uh... Uh, it's too late. Uh, she takes all the ingredients out of the fridge. Okay. Nothing happens over there. Yes, you guys Thank God. pilfer uh, the wine. There seems to be some okay wine in there. I would say it's like a bit above boxed wine, but not nothing super fancy. It is wine, though. It's all serviceable wine. Well, I'm probably not good enough for me. Well, you will. You can carry it then. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've had it with this kitchen. I'm, I'm to the next room. Yeah, I'm going to the quartermasters next. Yeah, I'm exiting through this door, which is, I think, you can click I on it and like, open it. Right. I feel like Jack would be sad if we didn't check the bodies, though. <laughs> all right. All I'm, right. Well, I think that is very cursory important. investigation of the bodies. Then <laughs> I want to check this one because this one I feel like there's a story here. Yeah. If I put us in combat again, I am so fucking sorry. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll check these two over here. <laughs> uh, sure. Why, why doesn't everyone give me an investigation check and we will see if Ooh, these I'll bodies check. have any interesting stories? I'll check this body then. We can mm. all check a body. Sure. Seventeen. Baby, 20, actually. Ooh. Ooh. Look, I had a 12. Ooh. Ooh, nat 20 for a 26. Uh, Why is Dabarilla so shit? Checking the shit out of these bodies. <laughs> uh, well, Dab you might be. I <laughs> what I'll say is, uh, Dabarilla, you, you see these bodies kind of laying together, and in your head, you wonder if they had some sort of mid-combat epiphany or relationship, but the fighter in you says, nah, they just beat each other up at the same time. <laughs> um, uh, what I will say is uh, Mortimer with uh, with your 20 investigation check as you are looking through the bodies you do find several uh, pieces of gold Ooh. I'm going to say you find 15 pieces of gold that you are able to pocket with no one else nice. seeing nice pocket the fuck out of them <laughs> Yeah, Sigmar, you are able to find, uh, with your 19 investigation check, uh, you are able to find uh, this person seemed to be an archer and has a few arrows that look unusual to you. They look uh, as if they have some sort of energy about them. Mm. Maybe later you can take time and like investigate and see if you can figure out what they are doing. Grinderbin, with your natural 20... With your natural 20, I need to open up a tab. Hold on. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I love it when new tabs get open. Oh, a new tab's <laughs> got to be opened up. Uh, why, uh, uh, Grinderbin, why don't you roll me uh, a D100? Oh, yes. <laughs> there a die with that many sides? <laughs> you, roll, you roll 2D10, as I understand it. Yeah. Yeah. I got a 92. A 92. And gold coins just pour from every orifice of the court. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out this was actually a pinata. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, uh, Grinderbin, you are a, a purveyor of fine magical items. And as you true. are looking at uh, this soldier, you realize he's wearing mariner's armor. 
Uh, this uh, this is magical armor um, that uh, increases your swimming speed quite a lot. And if you ever uh, start your turn underwater with zero hit points, the uh, the armor magically makes you go to the surface. Uh, it's armor decorated oh. with fish and shells. This is uh, this is quite a magical item. Well, right that'll come in handy Ooh. when we find the Keep's Olympic-sized swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. All right. <clears throat> yeah, while we're in the middle of fighting it. Yeah. <laughs> Quartermaster time, please. Okay. I'm going to open this door here. Deborella cartwheels over again. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how she walks. <laughs> just yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh we found in here. someone. All right. What? The first thing you notice when you walk into the quartermaster's office is the mess. Books and papers were ripped off the desk and shelves in either a great fight or a mediocre burglary. The second thing you notice is the giant hole in the wall. Someone, uh, some seemingly great force has breached the keep's wall. And now I'm not judging your noticing skills, but lastly, <laughs> you notice the great Horse, a tall and commanding Asimar woman, stands at one of the bookshelves, casually thumbing through. She's wearing a white dress and has a confidence of a seasoned warrior, so you know she has at least one Tide Pen on her somewhere. Uh, Sigmar, you would know that this is Egalir Frostbones, your once betrothed, who you left at the altar. Interesting. Ooh. She. Oh crap! <laughs> uh, she looks up uh, from thumbing through one of these books and says, "Oh, Sigmar, I didn't expect to see you here." I could say the same about you. Why are you in Fawfell's keep? Where's my sister? Is your your sister's back home where she always is. Ah, uh, I, I could ask the same of you. Why are you here at Borthelmore Keep? <clears throat> That's the name of oh. the keep. <laughs> oh, I thought this was Lady Fawfell's property. <laughs> it's like, it's like you are purposefully being an idiot when it comes to royalty. Lady January Fawfell is the Viscountess of the land. Of course, this is hers. Sigmar interrupts her. I don't As care. I do not care. <laughs> and, and the, the Stop prince. talking about this. It's also the Marquis. <laughs> like, it's it's the whole hierarchy. It's like, guys, it's cool. It's like, she, this is not a problem. We can, you know, we can just keep moving. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shut up. Excuse I'm taking me? a bold step Sigma? forward. Sigma? Sigma? Who's the lady friend? <laughs> She's she's not my friend. She's who I was supposed to get married to. Married? Can I cook for it? <laughs> There's not going to be a wedding. Oh. I canceled it. All right. She's actually Why? in love yes. with my sister. Sigma. And because I didn't marry her, I left. Or they kicked you me out. You love your sister? <laughs> or, or I'm gonna I'm gonna like boldly step forward. <laughs> <sighs> okay. All right. I'm go ahead, Mortimer. I'm cutting into all this. I would say I can tell you what he's doing here. This is a hired bodyguard I've hired to protect my person as I investigate my keep. My name is Mortimer Farfell. I am related to the local nobility, and I just recently sped to this keep when I heard it was under attack. All right. Um, go ahead and give me a deception check. Um, you will have to give me a deception check with disadvantage, as um, she just explained she knows the hierarchy here in the lands. So <laughs> well, I'm you go that, right ahead. I'm just that confident as a confidence trickster. Mm. <laughs> Look, I thought the same of my strength, and I was very wrong. Bollocks. Oof. Oof. Um, she, she looks you straight in the eyes, Mortimer, and says, I know a thief when I see one. At least I know what a thief should look like. And looks you straight in the eyes. Okay, switching tack. <laughs> I, will <dro> I <laughs> will drop the posh voice and uh, raise an eyebrow and in my suavest voice will say, well, I guess it takes one to know one, madam. Hmm. Touche. I think I'm in here. I... <laughs> <laughs> I was sent here 
Sigma by my father in an attempt to infiltrate the keep to free the humans of their source of power. As you probably have found out by now, they keep the Jade Homunculus here, and if our family could have that, it would mean that the Asima people, in fact, the entirety of the Celestials, would be able to rule over the land. It just so happens that everyone was quite distracted by some sort of undead horde, so I was able to get in unnoticed until now. Yeah, weird that. Have you found that jade homunculus, then? I have found a few scribblings, nothing of use so far, but I have just started looking. Thank you. I'm sorry, your name again, thief? Um, it's, um, Roger. Hmm... Uh, just a quick side note, as I'm still on the outside of all this. Mm -hmm. You know, had to, took extra time to get that armor off. Uh, where's our Where's our friend Cornhole? Oh, good question. What's he mm. been up to? You guys uh didn't notice that you left Cornhole behind. I I noticed, and then I got distracted with a ghost stove mm. and wine. Weird. And then when we came back out here, mm. he was gone. Can I uh, do some searching for him while this is happening? Uh, if, if you would like, uh, yeah, Cornhole has, Cornhole has gone Cornhole's way. Hmm. <laughs> so if you would like to, uh, go other That's places and bastard. search for Cornhole, you go, you get to do what you want to do in this game. Oh, I was just going to roll investigation, but, or perception or something. Uh, sure. But, yeah. If you want to give or, me like, uh, I can. do, do either. If you, if you want like to see if you can notice anything, uh, askew. Uh, at at this time, absolutely. Um, fourteen with with a fourteen, you know, you kind of just got in here. You haven't really noticed anything uh, of importance, but you know, oh, actually, hold on for one second. I need to make a quick roll. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you don't notice anything off out there in the main hall. Okay. Hmm. Right. What's this lady's name again? My name is Egelir. Egelir, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, it is a traditional Asima name, actually in the player's handbook. Egelir, that's not even a funny made-up name. Uh, yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, the cat. Did you make the hole in the wall? I did make the hole in the wall. I have another question. Yes, the cat again. Why? So I could get in to the keep. All right, grown-ups talk now. Look, we're all looking for this jade homunculus, as I understand it. We've already been attacked by two haunted pieces of furniture. What say we combine our efforts until we find the bloody thing? Then we can see where the dice will fall. Uh, Sigmar... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, just making a roll. Go ahead, Sigmar. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Sigmar kind of being flippant about her being here because he thought he left all those people behind so like if you and the rest of the asmr are interested in his jade homunculus i'll make damn sure you don't get it <laughs> hmm well i guess when we find it uh and you see her kind of like put her hand very purposefully on the hilt of her sword when we find it i suppose we'll see and she looks to mortimer where the dice fall i'm definitely in here <laughs> um, okay. Uh, un until then, I won't get in your way if you don't get in mine. All right. Honor among the thieves. Hmm. So, um, have you checked that weird, heavy-looking grate that covering the cellar back there? I have. It seems to be locked, which is why I'm in here looking for keys. Good and thinking. Such. That was my. That was very much my thinking too. Where haven't you checked in here? Hmm, it's it's been, uh, I've been a little bit of everywhere. Uh, why doesn't everyone give me an investigation check and we'll see what you can find? <laughs> boosh, 19. Ooh, very boosh. Uh, you guys start leafing around through all of the different uh, books and papers. Like you see a little desk there with all sorts of things on it. Uh, Mortimer with a mighty 19 investigation check uh you do you find a key ring 
uh, that has several keys on it, like one of those comical, like old school, big key rings with the big, uh, like skeleton keys on it. Mm. Uh, you also find with a 19. Ooh. Oh, here we go. Uh, you find a series of letters. Hmm. Uh, you find a series, uh, a series of letters. Uh, letter one reads as follows. Um, you should be seeing this uh, to uh, Barthelmore Keep, care of Quartermaster. The hierarchy has heard many rumblings in the underworld. Those who would use the power of the jade against us. Those who would sell the ancient homunculus to our enemies. We demand an update of operations at Barthelmore Keep. Signed, Count Gregory Frontknuckle, Viscountess January Farfell, Duke Lornery Hose, the Marquis Fudge Ruckersford, Prince Chiserick the Third, the Second, and Queen <laughs> Beyonce Knowles. <laughs> well, that seems like every noble in the region. Reasonable. Yes, uh, you find the next letter. Um, to my dearest and most respected Queen Beyonce Knowles, uh, CC, <laughs> Prince Chiswick III, the second, Maki Fudd Rugsucker, Duke Lonery Hose, Viscountess January Farfell, Count Gregory Front Knuckle, it is with my greatest enthusiasm that I tell you of our security. The placement of the keep in the deep Oswello Forest means that we rarely get uninvited visitors. On the occasion that someone pokes around, my battalion of trained gods makes short work of their intrusion. We usually toss them to the outskirts and mutilate them as beasts would, discouraging others from heading this way. Finally, even if all else failed, no one could find the chamber of the homunculus, as its location is known only to and guarded by my most trusted friend, Caballo. Intrigue. Trust in me when I say that protecting this kingdom's power source is the never-ending devotion of my waking thoughts. I hope and pray you come and visit so that I may bask in your radiance and approval. Yours, Jeremy Dirgespoon, Quartermaster, Barthamore Keep. Another damn Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Very it's a common name. It's a very Apparently. common name. Uh, uh, and finally, <laughs> uh, Mortimer, you find the third letter in this chain. To Bothamore Keep, care of Quartermaster. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Signed, Count Gregory Frontenac, of Viscount of January Fafel, <laughs> Duke Lonery <laughs> Hose, Marquis Fudge Rocksucker, Prince Chazareth III, the second, Queen Beyonce Knowles. Okay, I'm going to quietly tuck these letters into my jerkin. Okay. And uh, hold up the keys and say, found them. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, everyone just went over there. So if we sh cut over to Grinderbin, uh, Grinderbin, you are in front of the bunkhouse door. Uh, go ahead if you would like to check in there. Actually, give me one second. I would just like to make a roll real quick. Yeah, it seems like a perfectly fine this, idea. I'll this do is that. getting oh, okay. ominous. Yes. Mm. Um, all right, Grinderbin. Uh, you, uh, you go. You can go ahead and open the door if you would like. Oh, oh, I can. Yeah, I can do that. You can. You oh. can open your own doors if they're unlocked. Isn't that neat? Oh wow. That's why I kind of. I think this system is fun. Um, uh, but yes. Uh, so Grinderbin, uh, as you walk into the bunk room, uh, you Ooh, see boy. several rows of bed, all with little uh, like foot chests at the foot of their bed, um, and uh, you know beds mostly unmade. Uh, some are are made up very nice. This just looks like a standard bunkhouse, but. What everyone would notice, but Grinderbin uh, especially would notice, uh, is a very loud boom come from across the hallway. And now go ahead and open the door. Oh, oh you closed it. There it is. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> As you open the door, you see a giant hole in the wall, rubble everywhere, and as the dust settles, you see two centaurs with miniguns pointed in your direction. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and go, hold on. That's right, centaurs with miniguns. To be continued. Uh, 
and and they point the miniguns at you and they say, We are here for Dehadre of Hudson Hawk. Where are you keeping him? The the, the who what? I'm sorry. Say it again! Freeze frame. <laughs> and we freeze frame! Perfect! Uh, all right, we will pick this up in the next episode as now you're dealing with Azamar, centaurs, and miniguns. Oh my! This is getting Tune in. contrived. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean contrived? This is all perfectly no, no, natural. No, no, it's fine. Everything's fine. I like, I like that they have miniguns because they're probably very sturdy with those four legs. Yeah, exactly. that's, yeah probably won't have trouble keeping their balance at all. To wield a minigun. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, then we will catch up with you next time on Adventure is Nigh, episode three of the Jade Homunculus. Bye. <laughs>